Know a lot about golf. Well, we're waiting. Finally got the dishes done. It's ready. <laughs> we are those weekend golf guys. The post Thanksgiving, post Black Friday. Boy, am I glad I just managed to avoid all that crap weekend. John Ashton here in studio. Tara Bassett with us. Jeff Smith with us here. And uh, what is it? Three more weeks now till Christmas. Three and a half. Are you four, feeling fat month? today, John? Why do I? What are you trying to say? Fat. Tara? What are you trying to say? Well, you said you didn't want to carve the turkey, but that didn't stop you from eating it. Oh, nothing does. It's it's turkey is is a. Uh, a, a good vehicle and an excuse for sweet potatoes. And it's a great excuse for sleeping, considering it's full of tryptophan. It is. It is. Hit that uh, recliner and watch some golf. However, it is now, what, uh, 48 hours past Thanksgiving dinner, and if I see another piece of turkey, I'm going to be very upset. <laughs> Just plan for Christmas. <clears throat> no, no, i got I got to point this out. Thanks to my father, who hated turkey. Hated it. And would eat it only on Thanksgiving, and then you had to drag him kicking and screaming to the table and promise him all of the dark meat. His tradition that we grew up with on Christmas Day was a standing rib roast dinner with the little white chef's hats on top of the bones and the whole nine yards. Nice. So now that this year I've managed to get the girls out, I mean, the the girls have moved away, and uh, the family is uh, all engaged otherwise. It's just immediate family. I'm doing a stand and rib roast. Because you know why? Because my wife hates beef. Yes! Really? <laughs> so it's all for me. <laughs> good work. Good Thank work. Thank you very much. That's good but, for thinking about everybody in the group. It is. It is. But I digress. <laughs> oh. Suddenly I'm getting hungry again. You know, I got out of the the day after Thanksgiving uh, nonsense that is uh, going out and spending a ton of money. Yeah. Uh, I just book a lot of golf lessons. It's awesome. All the guys come. Yeah, because it's they, great. Yes, because they they want to come. They want to hit golf balls in the studio. So here we are, banging balls. You know, we're playing we're playing the virtual golf in the studio, uh-huh. and uh, there's a lot of teaching going on. Oh, and, yeah. and it's a lot more fun than going out standing there holding a bunch of shopping bags yep. waiting for somebody else. That, Sorry, goes, wait honey, a minute. I'm, I'm not yet done. I'd love to come help you pick out Christmas gifts for everyone, right? But it's a big day for me. Yeah. I got, got, I got golf work. lessons. Yeah, that's it. It doesn't matter that there's you know four feet of snow on the ground still in Buffalo. Yeah, it might be more than that, isn't it? Well, um, it was last week, but the yeah. temperatures they were supposed to. I mean, we yeah, got, got warm warmer. here, yeah. and and next week in the seventies again here. Yes, okay, like quick, we're quick back question. to the south. Do you guys yeah. shop for your golf supplies online or in a store? No, always in the golf shop. Really? Always in the at yeah. Otter Creek. Yeah. Can we buy stuff from Otter Creek online? Absolutely. Wonderful. Yeah, you can get anything. You Do want. you know the number of people who are shopping online now, and the people who are going into the stores are usually those from the eighteen to twenty nine range, and they're doing it for the experience because they're so used to ordering online. Yeah, they're not used to actually. Ooh, what is this person who said, "May I help you"? <laughs> <laughs> what is that? <laughs> what is that? What is it? No, in fact, Jeff makes a good point. In in as much as we like to play golf. And we like to play golf at different golf courses. Mm-hmm. And when we walk into a golf course and the guy says, that'll be $79, we go, <gasps> and now listeners around the country are going, $79, that's cheap. Yeah. Uh, not here it ain't. All right? <laughs> in, in this section of the, uh, the, the lower Midwest, Mid-South, whatever you want to refer to it as, $79 is, is an upscale course. It's, it's a high-dollar course. But to keep, to keep affordable greens fees please shop at the pro shop right because that is another way the golf courses make money and the more money they make the less they have to charge you to play there right and and i want to say it in the same thing in yet a different uh angle from this okay all right given the fact that almost every golf shop in the country is going to price match all the drivers all the irons all the stuff that you want to go buy Mm -hmm. anyway right Somebody is going to get that profit. Now, there's not a lot of profit in the the marketplace in the the hard goods business. There's not much at all. No. But essentially, if you're a player at a specific golf course, all right, Mm -hmm. uh, whether it be Otter Creek or or your own, you know, club wherever you are, golf course wherever you are, listening to this, is that 
let's just say that out of this two hundred dollar driver, there might be twenty five dollars to thirty dollars in profit mm-hmm. for for whoever you buy it from. Right. Now, do you want to really support you know a big box store or someplace that does not affect where you play? They get the profit. And what happens is the golf course where you do play, they don't get the profit. Right. Which means they don't have that 25 to $30 to perfect the facility, to mm-hmm. make it better for you when you go play. Mm-hmm. So essentially, every time you're buying something from an, an off-course retailer, you know, one of those big box places. Right. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but I am saying just be aware that that means that the profit that they make is the profit that the golf course didn't. Right. And so when you go to complain about the bunkers – or the cart paths, or the carpet's not good, or maybe the bathroom's not as clean as you want it, or whatever. Mm -hmm. It's because of all the off-course sales and not the on-course sales. It used to be where all the money was taken in at the golf course, and they could keep the money in the golf course and upgrade the facility and do better things for you because then they had the money. Now now, now it's just greens, fees, and food and beverage seem to be the only – the only things you can count on. Right. And and many courses are in such difficult shape because the, the cash flow didn't continue to come to them. Right. That they no longer get a chance to um, get ahead of the game. Yeah. They're just always scrambling. Yeah. And it's difficult. Yeah. So do do everybody a favor in the golf community where you live is when you buy stuff, buy it from the pro shop at your favorite golf course. I bet your bathrooms are really clean, Jeff, aren't they? They are. They are because I think of that. Right, I think of that um, as as one of the important things about every public facility. Yeah, and is, I bet they're I bet they're more clean in the women's room because it's more important to us. It is good. It is. You um, get brownie points for it, that. It's it's not only is it more important to you, but it is cleaner. Excellent. It is yeah. excellent um, because we pay attention. We know you know. Yes, it's a much smaller clientele, Otter Creek, um, much like every course in the country. You know, the, the largest percentage of play are, are men. Right. But we would be really foolish to not pay attention to making the women's uh, facilities and everything about it mm-hmm. as good as possible I for agree. them when they show up. I We'd agree. be really foolish to think that way. I mean, any, any golf course operator who cannot honestly walk down the street and say chicks dig us has a problem. Yeah. You know, because they have to. There you go. You you, have to they have that. to do that. I mean, if you, if you only thought of them. As as a small percentage of your market, so you only put in a small percentage of effort toward that, you're really foolish. Yes, you are. You're really foolish. Yes, you are. All right. So happy post-Thanksgiving weekend to everybody. We've got a lot of great stuff. We've got a, a, a big hitter, long driver, a uh, guy, guy who was on big break. He is a beast of a man. Isn't he, though, huh? He hits it. Oh, I thought you were talking way. about me. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. no. Later. <laughs> we, we only talk about you when you've turned around. Isn't it always oh. about me, John? Well, some might say. <laughs> I'm, I'm not one of those some, however. We are those weekend golf guys powered by Golf Talk America. Be right back, don't you? No college degree and mid-career? Make the choice that can make a difference this year with an ITT Technical Institute near you. At ITT Tech, we offer programs of study in fields including information technology, electronics technology, drafting and design, business, criminal justice, nursing, and the growing field of health sciences. And now, ITT Tech is helping reduce the cost of education with a new ITT Tech Opportunity Scholarship. The scholarship can help lower your education costs dramatically. We've always believed pursuing an education is a sound investment. And now, with the ITT Tech Tech Scholarship. Education could be in your future. To find out more about the Opportunity Scholarship at ITT Tech for yourself, just call 800-793-0859. That's 800-793-0859. With the ITT Tech Opportunity Scholarship, now it's your turn. 800-793-0859. How are we doing? For more information about graduation rates, the median data of students who completed the program, please visit programinfo.itt-tech.edu. Attention, if you've been classified as a high-risk driver due to DUI, DWI, or tickets for aggressive driving and are required to get expensive and hard-to-find SR-22 auto insurance, then you must listen to this message because we can help. Serenity Group Insurance is the largest insurance company in the U.S., specializing in SR-22 auto insurance and focused on serving the needs of customers classified by the state as high-risk drivers. We help people get back on their feet by providing easy-to-get, low-cost SR-22 insurance that anyone can afford. If you 
you need SR-22 insurance, or if you have it now and are paying too much, you need to call us today for your free quote. Our specialists are standing by waiting for your call. We understand people make mistakes and are here to help by making SR-22 insurance easy to get and affordable for everyone. The call and the quote are free. Call us now at 800-521-3436. That's 800-521-3436. Again, 800-521-3436. 800-521-3436. Those weekend golf guys, John Ashton, Tara Bassett, Jeff Smith, we are all back. And we have with us on the line right now, Michael, Michael Edis. And uh, Michael's a buddy of mine, a, a good friend, a teacher. How you doing? Um, Michael is uh, a, an accomplished player, uh-huh. um, long ball master. This guy can flat out crush it. Oh, this one of those long drive guys? Yeah. Yeah, he's one of them. But boy, let me tell you, he's a, an amazing talent. Uh, well, let me not ask, just in teaching, but in, in playing the game and really? also beating the living daylights out of a ball. Well, Michael, let me ask you the first question most people want to ask a long a long drive guy: <laughs> How's your short game? Do you own a pitching wedge? Sure. And do you know how to use it? <laughs> uh, I do. Actually. I do. Believe it or not, my short game is is pretty good. That's he, really obnoxious. Well, because if you got to go it at both ends, man, that's really obnoxious. You know the part about that, John. You got to figure it out. He hits it to a wedge a lot. Yeah. I bet. Well, I'm sure. So, I was going to say if he just puts it in the cup, why does he need the short yeah, game? Yeah. yeah, I mean this guy. But he's the guys hit more wedges than. But he the hits guys four who do the, the the long drive thing for a living, they don't have to get off of the tee. They just just sit back and wail, and then they measure it and they hit it again. They don't actually have to play the game if they're just a long drive guy, but obviously Michael's is a oh, little bit a more, more rounded than that. Certainly, certainly. Hey, he's he's even a golf coach for the Long Island University <laughs> men's team. Mm-hmm. Really? That? Yeah. L I U. How about that? John Michael? is John is a northeastern uh, uh, exactly. uh, transplant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I grew up in New York, New York. So you know, what can I say? Michael, do you want to get a word in edgewise here with these guys praising you? Probably not. No, I'll tell you <laughs> what, man. Not. I'm enjoying it's good pub- it. You it's know, good I, I don't want. I don't mind at all. I feel like I'm, uh, you know, sitting at the bar with my buddies. So <laughs> you are. Then we've accomplished our mission. <laughs> Michael, tell me, tell me a couple things. You know, you've been on the big break, Michigan. Um, you know, tell me about a little bit of that and yep. the experience of what it was like, you know, from a guy who's actually competing. We know what it's like to watch the television and to see what you guys are doing. But, you know, behind the scenes, you know, what kind of stuff is going on there? Well, behind the scenes, it's it's much more nerve wracking than any tournament golf I have ever played. Wow! Um, you know, you get into a tournament, and if I hit a bad shot, I can generally recover, knock it on, try to make par, or something like that. If you hit a bad shot on the big break, everybody sees it, like everybody <laughs> so if you shank it the producers don't go all right hit that again you know like that's not good for tv they're just like they got it from 10 different camera angles <laughs> and when you see the show you think at least i did i was a fan of the show and, and i am a fan before i went on it i figured okay there's one or two camera guys and you and that is so not the case you before every uh challenge they explain the challenge to you. The producers there, the directors there, the rules officials there, the lawyers there, <laughs> to make sure that you have to sign to make sure you understand the rules. <laughs> oh my god! On the challenge, and the lawyers fair. there, and Good you walk Lord. out, and there's like boom cranes, and there's cameramen, and there's, I mean, this whole big production, and all of a sudden, there's you're thinking it's three people, and there's a hundred. Yeah. So it's a bit intimidating. <laughs> and it wow. takes a lot of talent for a photographer to follow you the know, flight of the golf ball. It does. That's amazing. I couldn't do that. So tell me, some of the it people does. you met these, on these the show. Guys, where, where, you know, a lot of these people you met, have you, do you stay in contact with many of them? The people you met on the show, you know, do you stay in contact with a lot of them? Oh, yeah. I would think that oh, going absolutely. through an experience yeah, like yeah. that would be lifelong, lifelong yeah. friend material, um, right? You know, yeah. Well, like David Mobley, for example. Yeah, I know David. Uh, he's a fellow long driver. Yeah. So we're all t- you know, two-time world champion. I mean, so we keep into constant contact because, you know, sometimes we do charity shows together or I'll see him at events or do trick shot shows together and stuff like that. Um, some of the others, um, not all of them are in golf anymore. Uh, they tried playing professionally, playing on a Hooters tour or, or Futures tour or whatever, and uh, 
didn't quite work out and they got regular jobs. And then there's the others that are teachers. So, and you, and you always keep into contact. I mean, it's, it's kind of a badge of honor, you know, to be like, Oh, I'm, you know, I was on the big break. And the funny part is, is it doesn't really matter if you were on that show, like that particular season when, for example, so like when the PGA show comes up in January, it's just mayhem because you get like 50 big breakers together mm-hmm. and just because you were on the show and you all shared that experience, you instantly have a connection and you just, so it's actually really cool. It's fun. Then you are at actually. the bar with all your buddies for sure. Yeah, yeah no question. Yeah, we know so tell me, tell oh, me yeah. something, do, do, you know, as you, <laughs> you as a competitor and, and a, a big break guy and a long drive competition guy, um, and then you, and now you teach, uh, you know, college kids <laughs> and travel around. There's got to be a lot of funny stuff going on. You know, you get a bunch of guys together talking golf, probably a little, probably a little jaws working a little bit. What kind of stuff are you hearing oh. that's just cracking you up? Oh, it's it's you know, coaching a division, coaching a division one golf team. Um, it definitely keeps you young, gives you a little gray hair. You know, um, I definitely have a lot more gray than I used to when I first started this uh, 11 years ago uh, <laughs> coaching, but. It, it is fun. I mean, the guys, the stories, the, the, the banter in the van on the road and some of the stories in the team meetings and or just on the driving range and just stuff like that is absolutely crazy. Um, I've actually talked to two other coaches uh, that were we see each other all the time and about potentially even writing a book about some of the stories and stuff like that, because it's just you wouldn't believe it. I mean, you you legitimately would not believe all the stuff that I mean. Just some of the stuff that comes out of these kids' mouths, and some of the stories are just hilarious. Anything so that we can uh, hear on the air, because <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's always the, that's always the rub. You know, I've been around I've been around golf for a long time, and a bunch of guys. You know, and it's always there's always uh, somebody's always needling somebody else in some way, and on occasion we can mention them on the air because you know you got to change a language here or there, but. Right, right, right. Well, I mean, even, you know, just like general stuff. I mean, the guys, you got to understand. I First of all, I have an international team. Mm-hmm. So all my guys are, I mean, are international. So I have, like, kids from Wales and kids from England, right? So automatically you get, that's just an instant kind of just back and forth. And then I have kids from Australia and kids from New Zealand, and that's an automatic back and forth. So without me even doing anything, it's... Whether it's soccer, rugby, um, their country, you know, this, this, this. I mean, you know, this one's, you know, you're more inbred because you're from this part of the country and you're here and this and, and all the stuff. And they just go back and forth. And it's it's just it's ridiculous. I mean, the stuff is just, it cracks me up. That's funny. Do you hear a lot of that in the in the long drive competition stuff that you had? The long drive competition stuff is. Yeah, the the long drive competition stuff is there's so much testosterone um, <laughs> on at those events that it's it really is like a measuring contest. If you go out to the range, yeah. <laughs> you go out to the range, and it is constant needling, constant jawing, constant back and forth. The best part about it though is it really the dynamic is so great because it really is like a brotherhood out there. So I mean there was. A, when I was at the World Championships, one of the guys during his set snapped his driver. Okay, he only he only brought one up there because he was hitting it really good, and he's like, "I'm I'm fine." He snaps his driver, which I usually bring three or four, but um, and you know what are you going to do, right? So I was on the sidelines. One of the other guys was on the sidelines. Another guy gra- ran to a station, grabbed the driver, threw it to him so he can finish his set. Mm, I mean, that's pretty good. Yeah, I mean, that's, you know, what kind of, comp- I mean, most competitors aren't going to do that. You know, if a competitor right. is out, you're going to be like, yeah, okay, goodbye, <laughs> you know, but but they didn't do that. Like, guys will, will automatically help each other out, um, or, or if guys go further, hey, can I borrow this, or what did you do with this, or do you have shafts laying around, do you have heads, what can we do? So, it's really good. The, the thing I would like to see, personally, is I think long drive can be like the X Games. That's what I think. I mean... That's the way it should be. It's just it's a different animal, you know. It's it's loud music, it it's bigger than life kind of personalities. Definitely guys with egos. Definitely, 
I mean, it's it's just it's it's golf on steroids. Yeah, and there's some I think big it should boys be out like there that. too. There's some it's big fun. boys out there. They look like a bunch of football players when I watch them on TV. There's some <laughs> there's some guys that are just beasts of people. So are I mean, you saying I could not play, Michael? Is that what you're saying? She's a uh, you can, but I don't, I don't know how. You might not get out of the first round. <laughs> just my luck. But they, they let you try just to be polite because they're that kind of guys. Okay? Good. Hey, yeah, Michael. Exactly. Hey. I don't want you know. I don't want. I don't want a Ted Bishop thing going on. That's right. I mean, so. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Hang out with us just a little bit. We're going to take a quick break, and we will be right back with Michael and a whole lot more long driving and big breaking and all kinds of good stuff right here with those weekend golf guys, powered by Golf Talk America. Don't you? Believe? Hey, this is John Ashton, and we have got a way for you to actually have a lot more fun watching PGA tournaments this coming year. we got a way to get you some skin in the game. I want you to check out Cosmic Sports. Dot com. It is a fantasy golf site. Before every tournament, you're going to uh, pick one, two, maybe three teams of seven players each. Don't worry. Hey, we've got all the information you will need to make the uh, smart choices as to who you're going to put on your team. But we'll have more details about that later. Right now, we just want you to go to CosmicSports.com and sign up in advance. All right, register with the site. And uh, we will give you some free plays when the new PGA season kicks off in January. January 8th being the first beginning tournament of the season of 2015. CosmicSports.com. Fantasy golf. You're going to win prizes. You're going to win cash. It's not going to cost you a whole lot to play. And you're going to go right now and register in advance. CosmicSports.com. That's C O Z M I C Sports. Com. No college degree and mid-career? Make the choice that can make a difference this year with an ITT Technical Institute near you. At ITT Tech, we offer programs of study in fields including information technology, electronics technology, drafting and design, business, criminal justice, nursing, and the growing field of health sciences. And now, ITT Tech is helping reduce the cost of education with a new ITT Tech Opportunity Scholarship. The scholarship can help lower your education costs dramatically. We've always believed pursuing an education is a sound investment. And now, with the ITT Tech Scholarship, education could be in your future. To find out more about the Opportunity Scholarship at ITT Tech for yourself, just call 800-793-0859. That's 800-793-0859. With the ITT Tech Opportunity Scholarship, now it's your turn. 800-793-0859. How are we doing? For more information about graduation rates, the median data of students who completed the program, please visit programinfo.itt-tech. Edu. And we're back, those weekend golf guys, John Ashton, Tara Bassett, Jeff Smith, Michael Michaelides. Wasn't Michaelides like uh, King of Crete or something like that? Uh, yeah, maybe. I don't know. You know, I don't know. I kind of have the build. I have a Spartan build. So, you know, 6'4", okay. 250, I got beard. <laughs> yeah. I saw the 300. Yeah. That's but that, that would make you a Cretan then, right? If you no, we won't we won't go there. Uh, hey, we hey, want to. He's a big man, man. It's yeah, a good I mean, thing this is radio, and you're way but over here. But he's in Brooklyn, New York, and I ain't, so I don't have to worry about it right now. <laughs> he doesn't know what you look like yet. <laughs> but 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 Michael, um, let let's talk about Big Break just a little bit. Um, yeah, sure. When when you watch the Big Break, that's got the uh, the women on it. Yep. They all do like commercial breaks with the chicks in the pool and the bikinis and stuff. Yeah, it's great. I know it, but <laughs> but it's. Do they have to like pay him extra to do that? Because you know, you mentioned the Ted Bishop thing. That gets a little a little sexist there. Well, you know what it is. Well, first of all, I think the, the, every a lot of people think that we do get paid yeah. for going on the big break, and we don't. We don't get anything. Yeah. So you don't you don't get paid. Um, the only thing you really get out of it uh, is exposure, obviously, and then you get the bag and some clothing. Right. So, so that's what it comes down to. Um, they do. You know, the first day is usually press day, and that's when they take all those shots, like the bikini shots and stuff like that and everything else. And believe me, I mean, they tell you. They go, look, decide what you want to wear for press day. Decide this. They tell you where you're going to go. And so, like, I wore a shirt that said Ego <laughs> across the chest. So, um, you know, and then you have, like, other guys, like, that will do fishing or throw a football. Um, I don't think too many guys, uh, too many people want to see golf guys with their shirts off, no, unless it's like Alex, not, not maybe, no, not. but no. or uh, Rory squatting four hundred pounds. But other than that, <laughs> that was uh, pretty um, cool to see. So that, usually, usually the girls are a little better at doing that than the guys. Yeah, I was just going to say, I bet they'd like to see me with my shirt off. Yeah, yeah. Mostly. Well, yeah. I mean, listen, it, they 
you know, they got some they got some talented players. I mean, they, they the girls look good and they can play. Yep. They can definitely play. I it, can wear a bikini. It is on our bucket list, Tara. We'll just exactly. we'll just let, <laughs> let you know that. Uh, did did you get any like Jeff was talking earlier about trash talking out on the uh, the the long drive competitions? You guys doing trash talking on the on the uh, big break, or or are you all like buddy buddy and let's be nice, play nice kind of guys? No, no. You know, you, you you start off like that. You start off in the buddy buddy play nice, and then you um you immediately go into like it, you know once it becomes a competition, it becomes real. So like on our show, for example. There was an episode, it was like maybe like the second or third episode where you have to hit it around the shot shape wall. Yep. So yep, I remember that. You know, Dave Dave is a character. Mobley's a character, right? And I love him. And he got some bad flack on that show. Like, I mean, he was like really portrayed as the villain and and he really wasn't that bad on the show. But again, I've competed with Dave. When the camera is on, it is the Dave Mobley show. <laughs> and you have to understand that. So one of the guys that he's competing against, Casey, a friend of mine who's the golf coach actually at Mi- um, Michigan State. So he's a very unassuming guy. So he hits a shot and David is you know, yelling at the ball. And he's like, come on, cut, cut, right? And you just – you you can see the steam come out of uh, Casey's ears, you know? And, and afterwards, like, he's like, just keep your mouth off my ball. Like, <laughs> just keep <laughs> your mouth off my ball. And – and Dave is sitting there, and then something else comes up on the show later on and about a divot and can he repair it. And listen, all the rules are explained. It's very clear, right? So he's just pandering now and doing this, this, this. So so between that and, and what I felt a little bit was a little showboating with Casey, I didn't want it to get on mic. I didn't want it whatever. I just shut my mic off, and I was like, which you're not tech, really, they don't want you doing, but I shut my mic off. And I have a conversation with him. I'm like, Dave, I said, you ever – Ever like I don't care. I know you showboat. I get it. We're good with it. I love it. But I said, you ever show up another competitor? I'm like, you and me are gonna go. I'm like, that's it. I'm like, just I don't care. Do what you got to do, but don't show somebody else up. Oh. And I just walk away. And like the producer's like, why didn't you leave your mic on? And I'm like, because it's not for millions of people. Like it's not for <laughs> you know. Like I'm not trying to to out the guys. that so we're just kind of talking. But you know, it, it gets it gets heated a little bit at times. Yeah. I can imagine. I can imagine, man, and and the pre- the pressures there because, like you said, they don't they don't take if if you screw it up the first time, it's it's a, oh too bad for you. Let's make funny on the on the TV show, and I'd watch it more often if it wasn't for that that male host with the funny accent, man. I just don't like. That. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, I forget who it is, but I know uh, Tom something. I know yeah. who you're talking about. Yeah, he's got to he go. Didn't, he didn't do anything for the he's show. He's got to go. Yeah, he didn't do anything. For the <laughs> show we'll be glad to take his place, Michael. Yeah. I listen, I would love to. I, I think it'd be great. You know, but uh but yeah, they haven't asked me, so that's okay. <laughs> oh well. Yeah. Maybe 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 that's down the line of, of your many accomplishments, man. So <laughs> so what's next? You're just trying to win uh you know, regional competition with the with the school or are you going back to competing yourself or what's what's up for you next, Michael? Well right now the team uh right now we're we just finished the season, uh the fall part of it anyway. Our championship really isn't until the spring. Right. So we're just doing off season work, uh practices and workouts and stuff like that. Uh as far as myself, uh just I just got some new long drive uh clubs, some heads from Mutant Golf and uh got some shafts. We've built them up. So can't wait to do some testing and, and, and you know, just get back in the gym, start training and try to win a world title. Man, that whole training thing. See, that's why I'm not a long driver. It's you got to like prepare and crap. <laughs> no, no, that's not. not the, that's not the reason you're not a long driver, John. <laughs> Believe me, that's not the reason at all. The, the other reason is I can't drive it very long. That's, but that's the, the real reason. <laughs> That's that's only the second reason. Yeah, that's right. right. That's, that's right. right. Gym. Well, you know, if I went to the gym five six hours a day for the rest of my life, maybe, but no, probably not. <laughs> but you know, he, you know, he he mentions the equipment a little bit. He said, "Hey, getting some new stuff in from Mutant Golf." Yeah. Tell me, have you ever heard of Mutant Golf? Well, yes, because I watch Long Drive Championships. Okay, because that's, that's what, what we out. play too. We yeah. play Mutant Golf. Yeah. <laughs> so what do we got here? Is this, is this like a three, four, five degree head? What are we talking about here? Yeah, I have – so my play driver is uh, an 8 degree uh, that I use every day uh, for competing just tournament-wise and stuff like that, like when I'm regularly playing golf. And then my long drive driver is – I have a 3 degree – I mainly use like 3 and 5.5 and degrees. That's less than my putter. With with yeah. with no uh, no scores or anything in the face. It's all yeah, just maybe. flat. 
right? <laughs> All right. So, yeah, and it's, so, and it's 49, yeah. you know, 49 and a quarter, 49 and a half inches. Generally get the swing speed up at about 143, 144 <laughs> or higher, and then yeah. ball speeds of, you know, 196 to yeah. 218, yeah. 220, something speed like that. Speed o light. Can you imagine this? His ball is traveling as fast as an Indy car. Yeah. How do you like that? Yeah. That's pretty dang cool, man. <laughs> wow. How about this? He's, here's a guy that, that we got on the radio right now, and he's going to talk about distance. Think about it. Michael and I have had a couple conversations. How about the average guy and what the average guy really hits it? Michael, on your regular tee shot, if you were out there on a par four and you're just out there playing with me and John and Mark and Tara, and you hit a tee shot with your eight-degree driver, how far is it really going to go? Um, you know, I average – Anywhere from 340 to 360. Okay. Right. That's normal. He ain't playing with us then. No, no, no. He, <laughs> he, it'd be fun. Unless it's a scramble. Right. Because you know what you'd find out? Is that it would, you'd, be, you'd be getting to his ball on your third shot. <laughs> oh, my <laughs> <at> me. <laughs> hey, Michael, you want a part-time gig on the weekends? <laughs> I think we got an opening here on those weekend golf guys. Listen, I'm a great listen. I'm I'm a, I'm a great scramble partner for anybody that uh, you know, I can imagine, man. Yeah. I, one time, and then and then every all the organizers are like, "Don't bring that dude again, man." <laughs> Michael, so, appreciate your so time, funny. sir. Good luck in uh, in your competitions and in the the teams' competitions, and uh, we'll get you back on, man. Fun to talk Absolutely. to. Absolutely, look forward to it. Oh, homeboy from New York, New York. <laughs> <laughs> was my accent, is my accent that bad? I don't know. I can't hear myself. So. Oh, no, 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 no. It's not bad at all, man. You no, just said you were in Brooklyn, so we like to we like to make fun <laughs> of the way we used to talk. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, all get right. some coffee. Yeah, get, get some coffee. All right. <laughs> Thanks, Michael. Appreciate it, all man. Right. Thanks, my no, friend. Thank See you. you. Take it easy. See you later. Right. Bye-bye. All right. Another piece of work. Man, you got some weird friends, but they're very cool to talk to. Uh, listen, we are those weekend golf guys. We've got a few more minutes together on this, the weekend after Thanksgiving. We are powered by Golf Talk America, and I'm hungry again. I'm just oh, glad that the shopping is over. Oh, man, no kidding. The, the golfers sure. are still coming to the studio. Yeah, We're golfing our ball inside. We're having a great time, and... You know, the farther away from Thanksgiving it gets, the guys get a little bit more at ease. It's always that day after they're yeah. they're thinking things are good, but they're worried about how much money just got spent right. until they're Prob- out on Christmas Eve trying to get say- their wife the perfect present, yeah, okay. which doesn't exist on Christmas Eve. Six no. o'clock, six o'clock, Walgreens, we're cool. Yeah. All right, we are those weekend golf guys, and we shall be right back. Or by Golf Talk America, by the way. No college degree and mid-career? Make the choice that can make a difference this year with an ITT Technical Institute near you. At ITT Tech, we offer programs of study in fields including information technology, electronics technology, drafting and design, business, criminal justice, nursing, and the growing field of health sciences. And now, ITT Tech is helping reduce the cost of education with a new ITT Tech Opportunity Scholarship. The scholarship can help lower your education costs dramatically. We've always believed pursuing an education is a sound investment. And now, with the ITT Tech Scholarship, education could be in your future. To find out more about the Opportunity Scholarship at ITT Tech for yourself, just call 800-793-0859. That's 800-793-0859. With the ITT Tech Opportunity Scholarship, now it's your turn. 800-793-0859. How are we doing? For more information about graduation rates, the median data of students who completed the program, please visit programinfo.itt-tech.edu. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 of pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 800-554-4183 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 800-554-4183 to take your call now. Call 800-554-4183. That's 800-554-4183. Again, 800-554-4183. 
Hey, this is John Ashton, and we have got a way for you to actually have a lot more fun watching PGA tournaments this coming year. we got a way to get you some skin in the game. I want you to check out Cosmic Sports. Dot com. It is a fantasy golf site. Before every tournament, you're going to uh, pick one, two, maybe three teams of seven players each. Don't worry. Hey, we've got all the information you will need to make the uh, smart choices as to who you're going to put on your team. But we'll have more details about that later. Right now, we just want you to go to CosmicSports.com and sign up in advance. All right, register with the site. And uh, we will give you some free plays when the new PGA season kicks off in January. January 8th being the first beginning tournament of the season of 2015. CosmicSports.com. Fantasy golf. You're going to win prizes. You're going to win cash. It's not going to cost you a whole lot to play. And you're going to go right now and register in advance. CosmicSports.com. That's C-O-Z-M-I-C Sports.com. Those weekend golf guys, we are back. John Ashton here, and of course, I'm the only one speaking because everybody else is eating. If that's turkey leftovers, guys, you're out of here. Sorry. No, we're chewing pretzels to help digest the turkey. Is that what it is? Mm -hmm. Okay. That Mm -hmm. is cool. Man, don't we have, like, better catering during a show here or something? We need to get some of that. You You know, know. you figure these guys have to work an hour a weekend. We need some beef. Instead of turkey, I'm tired of turkey. Oh, yeah, me too. Oh, I can't stand eating the, the oh. piece of turkey. Turkey is just so dry without the gravy. You know, Make gravy, some more gravy. Gravy's good. Gravy's like a, it's a, it's a beverage, really. Yeah. It's, you know, you yeah. need it. <laughs> yeah. I had a buddy once who was a little overweight, and somebody said, you better cut down on the sweets. He went, it's gravy, baby. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> man, oh, man. <laughs> Woo! I was a true Southern boy, man. Biscuits and gravy, mm-hmm. you know. Grits and gravy. It's you know, I think you in, have to do gravy with grits, yeah. or you have to do something. You have to do something with grits. Because I, you know, I, yeah. I, I lived in the South for a decade. Yeah, and the I don't know if anybody would ever eat grits without doing one to ten things to it because it's just god awful. Yeah. Well, grits <laughs> grits is really just an excuse to eat butter and salt. I wonder really, if they cheese. serve. Yeah. I wonder if they serve biscuits and gravy at the Southern golf courses. They do. They do. Really? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. oh I oh. thought I was just imagining that. No, oh, no, no, no. Huh? That's a staple. Oh, oh. Yeah. So. Right. That's they'll sell that every morning. Incredible. It's right oh, there. Not really. Oh, yeah. Let not me tell really. you. It's just. It's common. Let me. Let me tell you one gastronomic thing that's going to make you go, huh? Is when I first when I got my first radio job in Maine. Mm. All right. I went to a local luncheonette. And ordered a cheeseburger and some French fries. And this is not a McDonald's or anything. This is a local restaurant. And they said, would you like gravy with those? Oh, man. And I said, excuse me? And they said, do you want gravy on your French fries? And then when I looked at them funny, they looked at me and they said, you're not from around here, are you? (laughs) (laughs) But it is... Delicious. Oh yeah, I would. I would have to say yes to that. Oh, immediately. I did. Light I, brown or dark brown gravy. Light brown gravy. Mm. Light brown chicken gravy or beef gravy. It was, it was like, oh. But you go anywhere else outside of Maine and say, could you put some gravy on that? They go, oh yuck. Oh <laughs> yuck. Do you still make gravy for your French fries? You know, if I wasn't so gosh darn lazy, probably. <laughs> you know, at the moment, no. no. He's admitted it. Well, yeah, as we starve well, to death, here we eat our pretzels. You're and pretty our... energetic when you get to the golf course. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Maybe that's what we should start as a trend around the country where every golf course has fries and gravy. I Maybe if I just call them before I get there, you yeah. think they, they could? I would appreciate that. Listen, one, one thing here. Um, we, we're operating right now in a very little room. Um, with some stuff that, uh, well, actually, it was it was old when Marconi invented radio. It's like a jail cell, actually. It's, it's, it's ridiculous. <laughs> Which is um, why I do an awful lot of the broadcast from the golf studio. Exactly. Or exactly. a small tornado shelter. We would uh, like to build our own studio. But, you know, I, I've been out on the sidewalk with the cardboard sign that said, you know, We'll work for a new studio. In front I thought of the it was, chicken we'll place? play golf for food. Well, it, I tried that, too, and it didn't work. Did you wear the chicken so, costume, too? No, I didn't. No, it's, I was still doing the pizza pizza thing. Okay. But anyhow, <laughs> we have a campaign working right now on Indiegogo. That's I-N-D-I-E-G-O-G-O dot com. 
go there and look for Weekend Golf Guys, because that would be us. Yes. And we're just trying to raise enough money so we can build our own studio. We, I have, mean, a, we have a goal of $10,000. We do, and we have crack producer Mark, who actually owns a hammer and knows how to use it, and he's going he's gonna to help build the studio. And I will, too, because I did a home building show for 19 years, well, there so you I've go. learned a few tricks. So if you were be kind enough to get behind us and help us out a little bit with this uh, endeavor, uh, we'd be more than happy uh, if you were to send us $25 toward the uh, new studio. We'll send you a sleeve of not only very high-quality golf balls, but but Weekend Golf Guy logoed golf balls. Sweet. So you can have never have an argument again on whose ball that is. You go, hey, the, the one with the funky golf ball with the talking mic, mouth and mic, it's, that's me. Uh, or if you wanted to send us $100, um, we will see to it that Jeff Smith teaches you how to play golf. Now that's awesome. Much better than you have ever imagined you would be able and to. Then if Personalized you send us, videos. Yeah. Personalized. Yeah, he's not flying out to see you or nothing. Unless you oh. want to pay for the flight. <clears throat> and the well, that's true. In, if in, if in, you send us $1,000, we'll give you a brand new car. <laughs> okay. No, just uh, kidding. No, no, they're available the, at twenty nine ninety five at, at Toys R Us. We can give them that one. <laughs> that's it. There was, there was, there was a just real quick. I just want to tell you a story. There, there was a local restaurant chain that uh, offered a, a uh, incentive to their waitresses to to uh, sell more stuff, and they said that the one with the highest amount of sales at the end of the week would win a new Toyota. Oh, my gosh. That's incredible. It was incredible, except the woman who busted her tail all week long and won the contest and was given a little oh, six-inch figure me. from Star Wars. Oh, don't tell me. Oh, <laughs> there no. was her new toy, Yoda. Oh, oh no. she was wow. not a happy camper. Yeah, there's a which, lawyer involved in that Which sometime. just proves, ladies and gentlemen, oh, get it in writing. <laughs> oh, man. We are those weekend golf guys. Indiegogo.com. Look for Weekend Golf Guys campaign. We appreciate it. We're powered by Golf Talk America, and we will be right back. No college degree and mid-career? Make the choice that can make a difference this year with an ITT Technical Institute near you. At ITT Tech, we offer programs of study in fields including information technology, electronics technology, drafting and design, business, criminal justice, nursing, and the growing field of health sciences. And now, ITT Tech is helping reduce the cost of education with a new ITT Tech Opportunity Scholarship. The scholarship can help lower your education costs dramatically. We've always believed pursuing an education is a sound investment and now with the itt tech scholarship education could be in your future to find out more about the opportunity scholarship at itt tech for yourself just call 800-793-0859 that's 800-793-0859 with the itt tech opportunity scholarship now it's your turn 800-793-0859 how are we doing for more information about graduation rates the median data of students who completed the program please visit program info.itt-tech.edu those weekend golf guys john ashton tara bassett jeff smith all together uh trying to uh, commiserate post thanksgiving weekend thanks for uh taking some time out for shopping or or whatever it is you're doing uh i know that there's a very small percentage of folks golfing because uh, it's still kind of cold all over the world um, In some pockets, it's still a little warm to play, so yeah. that's good. Well, you know, right Wish here, I was what there. happened was about you know, two weeks ago, we had single-digit temperatures and a little bit of snow, and slowly but surely, it's warming up. Now we're back into the 70s, but that makes it a little squishy on the golf course. Well, there was some snow. You yeah. know, it kind of sat there, and now it just kind of seeps into the ground a little bit. It's kind of like spring, spring golf, uh, Yeah, you know. Still and, a little snow on the ground. And, and uh, we were out there the other day, and one of the guys you're playing with, first thing he says is he puts his uh, ball on the tee in the first hole. He goes, winter rules. And I'm going, okay, winter rules. But a lot of times you'll go to the course, and on the first tee it'll say winter rules in effect, or on the scorecard it'll right. say winter rules in effect. Right. Are those governed by the USGA and the RNA, or are those all local that's all local stuff. Okay. That's uh, that's sort of golf manifesto kind of stuff right okay. there. The, the USGA has to uphold their own specific rules for the purposes of, of fair competition. Yeah. And it'd be very difficult for the USGA to come out with one that said, nah, not so important. Yeah. It'd be difficult. Yeah. And so if you think about it in terms of sort of golf, 
Um, you know, the, the movement of the golf ball, you know, the, you're no longer playing it as it lies. Why? In, in winter, winter rules, you know, here you are with usually ground conditions that are a lot worse. Mm-hmm. Usually it's soggy. A lot of times there's a bunch of leaves still blowing around right. all over the place. Sometimes there's still snow in patches. You know, so does the USGA govern that? No. Um, what they do a lot of times is the the places that the winter happens, you know, the northern right. sections of the country. They hold no competitions. <laughs> right. And they don't hold any competitions. And at the same time, what they do is they put them into a – uh, a seasonal period of establishing scores for handicap. Okay. And so once that season has ended, for example, you know, I'm in southern Indiana. Mm-hmm. And uh, what happens is it's about uh, early November when the last official scores are then posted gotcha. for the official USGA handicap. And mm-hmm. then it kind of goes away. So it's this um, this free period. If you happen to be playing golf mm-hmm. – for the purposes of a handicap for the USGA and, and keeping it, it don't count. It doesn't count. Mm-mm. Yeah, but but you know, just little things, simple things like lift clean in place. Sure, which which is absolutely necessary because you're going to get a lot of mud. Right, and that one right there, if it's played under the the basics of lift clean in place, and you mm-hmm. wind up placing it right where it was, right, or if it was in its pitch mark, then you can repair it and put it there. Um, then you're still playing by the USGA rules, right. Right, but at, at no time does the USGA go. Eh, you don't yeah, have to do any of that mind. stuff <laughs> because they, you know they got a whole bunch of rules. Yeah, we don't write this book so nobody has to follow it. You know. Yeah, yeah. What if we have a plate-sized divot? Then you need extra lessons. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> or maybe your ball is in a plate-sized divot when you've hit a perfect drive right down the middle of your fairway. That's I possible. hate it when and that. You happens. know what? I will tell you what I would tell everybody to do is pick it up and put it next to it. Get it out of your way. You deserved a better shot than the result because maybe you're playing in the group right behind John, and your Ouch. ball was perfectly in the middle of the fairway, right next to his. And you know, Gigantic. John always plays with people who really suck. So. You deserve a break today. <laughs> That's right. Uh, yeah. That's right. So I, I always think that, that golf is a game, and I would hate it for anybody to feel like, well, the rules are so stringent that I'm not allowed to move my ball out of this place, even though under the general heading of the USGA rules is play the ball as it lies. Sorry about your luck. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I kind of take issue with that for the most part part when people are not going to be establishing a handicap and not going to be playing in tournaments what's the big deal right you know a lot of times too when you are playing to establish a handicap this is as an aside has nothing to do with winter rules some people will say well i I can only score three strokes over par because i'm doing this for my handicap right is it true no they can only essentially put that into the handicap computer there's there's something that the usga um has called equitable stroke control. And basically, it stops people from lying to the handicap computer um, to pad their handicap. For example. Okay. All right. Let's say that you're a uh, – let's call you a 10 handicapper today. Let's, let's wow, do that. Wow, let's, let's do that. A, yeah, yeah, let's call you a 10 ha- handicapper yeah. today. It's, you know, it's after Thanksgiving. I'm feeling like I'm in a pretty good mood. Ho, ho, ho. That's your Christmas present, pal. <laughs> Sorry about that. It's a conversation about you being a 10. <laughs> That's you the know, only conversation where that number and, ever appears. Right. And, and on a par five, you know, it will limit how many strokes you can take. Mm-hmm. Meaning that even if you made a 15 on that par five, right. you're only going to write down a seven. Gotcha. Okay. And the reason that is, is because they've come up with their own system of trying to stop the people who would, uh, oh, let's say, pad their scorecard mm. and enter that into the computer for people. purposes of... Of of having uh, a handicap that was a little bit more uh, to, like a, a vanity handicap. I've seen them, that to put them mo- more into yeah. uh, into flights where they can win more often. Something like that. Yeah. yeah, nobody would do that. Isn't that called called gold bricking or something? Cheating. Cheating. Yeah, Most that's, that's, that's yeah, close. One way or another. And and so what they've done though is it is it's twofold. It stops the people from from faking a score to put them in a certain handicap range that they're looking for. But it also at the same time isn't telling the truth. Mm-hmm. So let's just say that you're a two handicapper for a minute. So now it's a really good Christmas present John, for you. Wow. John is oh now gosh. a two handicapper. Yeah. All right. Now. Boy, did I improve in the last you hour. You sure did. What happens is what if you run into a bad streak? All right. Mm-hmm. 
And like my last not, ten years on the golf, something like yeah. that, yeah. right? Okay. Yeah. But you run into a bad streak. Maybe mm-hmm. you've uh, you know broken a hip or something and coming off of that, and all of a sudden this equitable stroke control thing. If you're only going to be able to post not what you really are shooting, you're going to be able to post only scores that are lower than that because the system says, hey, you're a two handicapper. You're not going to be posting scores this high. Right. Which means that it's going to take longer for you to have your scores catch up with you in terms of your level of skill at the moment. Mm -hmm. All right. So it's not going to be accurate for you. Okay. Because you're playing worse than what the scoring system would then allow you to take on the scorecard, which means if you went out and played Mark, Mr. Fairway over here, for some money, and right after you coming off a hip surgery, Mm -hmm. you used to be a two, but now you're going to be a 20. Yeah. All right, so if you used the system and you posted that, the numbers would not catch up to you and you wouldn't get your 20 strokes right. very quickly. It would take a long time. And don't think Mark wouldn't take advantage of that. He would because oh, he is Mr. Fairway and he, he likes your Mr. money too. That's a right. Right. So what are the elements of calculating a handicap? Oh, well, it's a huge formula. Mm-hmm. Um, it takes up about two pages mm-hmm. uh, in a in a book that's about as big as, say, your tablet right there that's about um, – that's a – eight inch tablet or something if you flipped over two of those it, it there's a calculation in there that it's just a ridiculous thing to look at but what are the basic elements i know if that you slope could, is one slope is one of them and and how slope is generated is that how hard a golf course is each and every hole is rated mm-hmm. for how hard it is how how bad it is on the short hitter mm-hmm. how bad it is for the sideways hitter mm-hmm. so the the bogey rating per hole mm-hmm. Uh, And then they add all the holes up, and then you get this course and slope rating that is is brutal. Well, the harder the golf course, you know, you could go out and shoot an 80 and on an easy golf course, and your your handicap would be not really all that good. But if you shot an 80 on a hard golf course, your handicap would be a lot better. The Mm -hmm. number's the same, but the course is harder. So Mm -hmm. they've done this beautiful mathematical formula that helps – players really figure out just how good they are okay so when we were doing this by hand and we were calculating our handicap Mm -hmm. what did we have to calculate besides slope you were you were calculating well there's a bogey rating that's factored in there too so to boil it all down to as simple a thoughts as possible it's very close but not always true um, to being about 96 percent of your scoring average that's if you're not a tournament player. Okay, so I have a story, obviously. I have a story that goes with this. You ready, yeah, she John? she was setting me up for this. I, I was setting you up yeah. for this. So I'm standing at Churchill Downs, and we're watching what's called the pill pull, which determines which horses go in which gate. And I'm talking to national championship basketball coach Danny Crum, who is a, pretty much a scratch golfer. So I say to him, Coach, I don't even know what my handicap is. How do I figure that out? And he says, okay, give me the last 10 golf courses you've played. And that man is so good at math that he calculated my handicap in his head and ended up giving me like a 16. And I said, how did you do that? And he said, well, I know all the elements of every golf course in town. So he, yeah. So he stood there in his head talking to a million people at the same time and calculated my handicap, which I thought was very impressive. And now this was 10 years ago, so we didn't have all the formulas. Actually, he made it up in... You know how do we how, how do we know any difference, right? And so she was people, so enthralled with him yeah, that she was going to believe any number came out of his you mouth. Know, do you know the answer? I said, even if I don't, I will deliver one that I make up in such a compelling manner. You will have no idea. I don't know the real answer to your question. He also <laughs> picks the winners of every race. FYI, really? Well, yeah, he's a good okay, horseman. So, so Many. next year, it's go hang out with Denny Crum. Watch what he Absolutely. does. Go bet what he, no, go no. Bet what he bets. Mister Fairway can beat Denny Crum head to head in a handicapping contest. Oh, Guaranteed. Really? But that's that's a topic for a different day, different show. Wow. We'll we'll be around for Saturday in May. We'll talk to you about it then. We are those weekend golf guys. We are coming right back. We're powered by Golf Talk America. Don't you? Move. 
Attention, if you've been classified as a high-risk driver due to DUI, DWI, or tickets for aggressive driving and are required to get expensive and hard-to-find SR-22 auto insurance, then you must listen to this message because we can help. Serenity Group Insurance is the largest insurance company in the U.S., specializing in SR-22 auto insurance and focused on serving the needs of customers classified by the state as high-risk drivers. We help people get back on their feet by providing easy-to-get, low-cost SR-22 insurance that anyone can afford. If you need SR-22 insurance, or if you have it now and are paying too much, you need to call us today for your free quote. Our specialists are standing by waiting for your call. We understand people make mistakes and are here to help by making SR-22 insurance easy to get and affordable for everyone. The call and the quote are free. Call us now at 800-521-3436. That's 800-521-3436. Again, 800-521-3436. 800-521-3436. Those weekend golf guys, John Ashton, Tara Bassett, Jeff Smith, and uh, what we have to look forward to around here, by the way, and hopefully you can uh, say this is where you're at too, is temperatures in the 70s next week. Nice. Uh-huh. In the 70s. Nice. Which leads to squishy conditions. That's okay. But you lift clean place and tell the USGA, hey, I'm not keeping a handicap, so back off, yeah, Jack. That's right. Just we back off. Squishy Just came from play. Nemo. Remember finding Nemo? No. You're squishy, squishy, squishy. Okay. I just thought I'd bring that up. And we thank you for it. <laughs> You're welcome. Yes, anytime. Squishy, squishy, squishy. That's okay. right. Whatever. That's all right. They're Whatever. playing golf. It doesn't make any difference. You know what? It's it's uh, at holiday season, and if you can get outside, golf your ball a little bit. Man, yeah. you're lucky. You're just flat out lucky because here we are broadcasting from the middle of the country, and it's not going to happen very many days. So that's those right. of us uh, listening to our show that's all over in the south, um, you know, we're jealous. Yeah, Officially, little, we're jealous. A little sympathy our way would be yeah, nice. We'd appreciate okay. it if we just knew you've said, oh. Yeah. What kind of golf ball is your favorite golf ball? Dixon brand? Holocore. Encore, holocore. <laughs> yes, the encore golf ball is I like. and uh, But to talk about, well, we won't get into that, just – Think about what I just said. Sorry, I'm a titleist guy myself. Yeah, I understand, which is very safe. Very safe. I like the ones with those weekend golf guys logo on them. I do, too. Those are cool. Yes. And you know what we call those? In the fairway. Free. Mark's hitting them. We call those free. 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 That's right. Uh, Speaking of which, if you'd like a golf ball with a weekend golf guys logo on it, you know what you do? You go right now to Indiegogo, I-N-D-I-E-G-O-G-O dot com. Sounds right to me. It does. And look for Weekend Golf Guys because we're trying to uh, build a new studio here because uh, actually we're, we're all sitting way too close. And um, the, like I said earlier, this stuff was antique when Marconi invented radio. Exactly. He acts so, like he doesn't like sitting next to me. You know, you know what Marconi's first words were when he invented the radio? You know, Alexander Graham Bell, the first thing he said was, Watson, come here, I need you. You know what Marconi said? No. no. Caller number nine wins a T-shirt. Okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> But if you were to just go to Indiegogo.com, look for the Weekend Golf Guys. We're trying to raise some money to build a new studio. If you were to contribute $25 to that cause, we'd be more than happy to send you a nice sleeve of uh, Weekend Golf Guys logoed golf balls. Send us $100, and Jeff Smith will teach you how to play golf Mm. substantially better, either via video or if you want to come to Columbus, Indiana. Yeah. You got it. I'll take care of him. Yeah, he's got a couch. All right, so do that. And if it is warm enough where you are, go play some golf. If it's not warm enough where you are, go play some golf indoors. And get ready for Christmas. That's right. And yeah. if you're going to buy, uh, if you've got presents that you're in mind for a golfer, get a gift certificate. Yes. At don't the not, clubhouse. Do not buy at the clubhouse. Right. Buy at the, go- the golf course clubhouse pro shop where you play more often. Support the golf courses. And if you're going to buy a club, don't. Just buy a gift certificate. There you go. I think we've covered all the bases. Almost every one. And you can buy all of the accoutrements. You can put golf balls and golf clubs. And, I mean, cl- golf gloves. Gloves, And yes. little hats and some yeah. under armor. You can put all those in the box. Buy you can do that. golf lessons yeah. for you, the people you care about. What about okay. the people you don't care about? Well, then just take their money. <laughs> <laughs> Simple. Indiegogo.com if you would like, and we'd appreciate it immensely if you'd like to help contribute to our cause of building a, a new studio so we can actually get this show produced on a weekly basis without, you know, having to be so close. 
Don't touch me there, Mark. We would also like you to go to thoseweekendgolfguys.com. Check it out. Again, if you'd like to get some uh, feedback on what your game looks like from Jeff, just go to thoseweekendgolfguys.com, Jeff's Quick Fix. Click on the link, the, the tab at the top that says Jeff's Quick Fix. You can ask a question. You can upload a video. He will get back to you directly. And like us on Facebook, please. And Twitter. And go to Twitter, at WKND Golf Guys. Or Facebook.com slash Golf Guys. You detect the pattern forming here. Yes, it is. Golf Guys, Golf Guys, Golf Guys. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Yeah, those Weekend Golf Guys. What a great name. Isn't it, though? Yeah. I, I was Got a logo of... on a golf ball, too. We do. Yeah, it's pretty. So much fun to have Jeff in the studio with us, as small and uncomfortable as it is. Yes. It's all right. That's it's okay. A, you know, chairs. That's all we got to do work on is chairs. We need chairs. And space. We need chairs. We need space. We I'm need sitting bigger on the floor. Space. I'm sitting on the floor. As, as well it should be. <laughs> Thoseweekendgolfguys.com. You guys have a great week. We will talk to you next Saturday at noon. See you. Bye.